Alright, Mr. Niren here, welcome back to another episode of Harry War Classic Ultimate, my summer for Undying Nephilim's mod, Harry Tool War, it's based on the 2014 release in December, 2014. I'm playing the Lebrina Refreem and the Sora, usually I, I started this, this campaign in 2021, in late January or February, and uh, played as the Huronians and the Lebrinians, but the Huronians have assimilated into the faction, and later con took control over Sora's domain, because they were kind of a vassal of two enemies that they were beating back, so it made sense. Okay, so we were supposed to fight the battle of the Fire Temple, the Goron settlement here, Death Mountain Crater, but uh, they destroyed the ram. They didn't have any range units, but they could destroy the ram, so probably they have towers. Okay, and we lost. Let's decline. We lose a lot of troops there. No, we have most of the troops alive, so we'll count this as a defeat. Couldn't breach the gate. We want to move the cannon there as soon as possible. We have a cannon somewhere too. It's further behind, but we only need one of them. With the help of the siege steam tank, I mean. It's a cannon. Okay, we can certainly do well. But I don't know, can the steam tank be used against Gate. I don't know actually. Counts as a cannon, it should be possible. We will just send the steam tank here and attack the fire temple. Can't do anything more. And as we are at the end of the turn, we can fight the other battle immediately. So this will be a shorter video, so we still need to end it after the battle. We want to play this battle in real time. We let this infantry army see here. We have better troops here and the general. And we have this backup force. I would prefer if this army was spent, but at the same time they can't fight the giant golems. They have at least three units of golems, I believe. Two at least. Team Golems. Okay, so we will attack with the General to go on off. And there, the enemy is Captain Dolotope of the Fairies with 2614 uh, units. Okay. Including Golems, Beam Golems, Bounded, Pixies, Violet Fairies, Sprites, Pink Fairies. Humanoid Manifest, Strays, Banshees, Corrigans. Yeah, that's it. Okay, save before the battle, of course. So you can start there if it crashes after the battle. And the Allied Army will be under AI control. But we will control it manually. Okay, and I will need to pause the game here. Because I need to go and eat. Alright, see you soon. Alright, I'm back. <coughs> we will continue, we'll fight this battle. On the battlefield. The camera moved a bit. But to fight the fairies in a giant battle. Two Labrinian armies versus one giant fair army. We have uh, one army under General Tukalonalf of Labrina with 1908 men. And then we have Captain Alboribi with adi an additional 2503 men. I believe the one with the fewer numbers is the stronger army. The other one is mostly just basic infantry and medium infantry. Okay, the enemy has a lot of casters and such, including the beam golem giants. We'll fight the battle. We have a fight three army strength ratio. Balance of power. Let's fight the battle on Batman. Let's wait. Wait. 
time. Wait again. Hopefully it will be better. No, it wasn't. Okay. So the army, the main army. Also, I don't believe that we have ended the tool. So we are still controlling the general. Usually it's possible to just leave it on. And it will work from battle to battle. But if you do that for too long, it will probably cause the game to crash. So you should... Um, uh, to be careful, you should uh, shut it down after each battle. I just forgot about it and didn't bother. So you're controlling the general here. It's a female general again. But the name is Tukalonalf, so I see that as a man. But the model that spawned was female. Uh, it spawns random models. Each battle for the generic generals. Only the custom generals have the same model all the time. Okay. So we have the better army. I would have preferred to just let the various army fight the enemy, but they could probably not handle the, the the beam golems. So I don't know about that. Also we need to place all the troops to be prepared. Place the gunner post here. Okay, then we'll place some leave uh, cannon fodders. And took his slaves in front of the gunner posts. They're supposed to prevent the enemy from uh, steamrolling this area. Alright. Four units of Toki there. Cavalry could be placed on the side. Gunners, etc. You'll place the bear steer. Loose formation. Cannon placed over here. Loose formation. Think. Cavalry. We one group, including the the ranged cavalry and the tank. Okay, the infantry. They could also be in that group, unless they are this two key infantry. They will be. Infantry, they will be in guard mode. We don't want th them to leave that place. We want them to defend the gunner posts. Okay, uh, they could be one group, by the way. And then we have uh, another unit of bear cavalry. They'll be moved over here. Loose formations. So we had two units of blue dragoons. Will be added to that group. We have the gunners. Could be placed in this area. Be prepared to fire at the enemy. And the grenadiers, we might actually want to use them. Uh, to destroy the beam golems, so we will place them here to have them prepared to take out these units. <laughs> place them there behind others. We have the 
and can need which could also be placed here. Actually they will be placed over here so they didn't fit here. You don't need them to be in loose formation. Became too wide. Okay. One unit of hand cannoneers there. Another one. Four units of hand cannoneers. We'll place all of them here. Okay. Can group all the gunners. Had two units of gunners, so we need to place this unit too. This one didn't really fit there. Okay, we'll place them like that. General Spodegard will be placed behind the army. Gunners could also be moved into the hand cannoneer group. We'll be in guard mode, so they don't, don't move out of, of space. We, d we want them to stand there and not move. We have two units of grenadiers. Okay, we will place this unit here too. This one can fire at will. Oh no, I don't want them to fire at will. I changed my mind. I want them to be prepared to attack the, the other units will place the other one there too. We need them to take out those golems. And then the cavalry will actually act as attacking troops. They will be under AI control. Start the battle. Pause the game. Get some reinforcements. We have an entire army reinforcing. Yeah, I forgot. Okay, we will not order them to move yet. Uh, or we will. Okay, the cavalry and the tanks and the steam tank. Okay. They will harass the enemy. And is shaking due to our hand cannoneers here. We didn't have a horn in with this general. So these troops are here to defend if they storm the barricade. Prevent them from destroying the barricade easily. And we are not fallen, Captain Dolotofi, the fairies of Tarum has fallen. Enemy army, the human manifests, they are dangerous, they can take out the gunner posts from afar, they are mages, not the strongest mages, but they are still mages, they easily break, the, hopefully we can break them with our gunners and hand cannoneers, a lot of them, one of the most common units, here they have some medium infantry, they are decent. Nothing special though. The range units are their strengths, just like Labrina. Then they have these, they are also good but few. And these, the bounded. 
the, the ones we really need to take out is the beam golems because they can't be taken out I believe with infantry or they are very very difficult to take out with infantry they might be killable if you have uh, enough infantry ah, so the hand cannoneers are taking them out we didn't need to use the grenadiers so these can also fire a giant beam we have 60 missile attack, 19 melee attack, 6 hit points special attack Bonus fighting cavalry, combat bonus in woods, right a nearby enemy, good morale, can't hide, good stamina. So yeah, they are really dangerous. They are the only ones in their army that I'm worried about. Ah, our cavalry has charged their infantry here, the Corgans, fighting the blue dragoons. Yeah, this is very well. Killed eight percent already. Yeah, Labrina is very effective from afar too, yeah. especially when we have the gunner post and uh, the sub mode added the uh, Verdungus, inspired by Harold Conquest. They didn't have cavalry in the past. I believe the the bears, the bear and the original Harold to war either. They were added in. Harold to the war 4.6. So I added that unit and then I added a Kodungus to so instead of having zero cavalry units they have two. Well the fairies still do not have cavalry except those beam columns. They can't use cavalry. So we had two units of blue dragoons in this army. Cavalry did way better than I had hoped they would do. And here is the Allied army. Them fight. Good, they will prevent the fairies from reaching the gunner posts so they can continue to fire until they have no ammo left. So of course units in this game do not have unlimited ammo or ammunition, but they have a lot of ammunition. Didn't want this Allied army to fight the beam golems because we would lose a lot of the troops we have the Huron troops too can't zoom in on the allied troops so the, the gunner post is easily one of our best units but it can be destroyed, it can even be broken so uh, we really needed to have Tukke in front of it protected now the allied army will handle the fighting together with the cavalry. These strays are really dangerous. They have very good defense, 30 defense. Same as the Uka units, so they are really, really good. Yeah, as defensive tank troops, but they do not take a lot of damage. They only have one hit point and three attack, one charge bonus. So they suck in attack, but really, really hard. Yeah. So they are good at defending casters and such. They are the troops you want in front of your casters, so the enemy can't uh, attack the casters if you play the fairies. Just like you want the Tukki in front of the gunner posts, or in front of gunners, so enemies can't attack the, the gunners. Well, the cavalry is good for just harassing troops. Ambi, Boom Guards and Palace Watch. There are a lot of Allied troops, but even cavalry. We do not have a lot of cavalry, of course. I believe that Kadungus are only available from Crescent Island. So, limited. In, in the number of melee cavalry that we have. However, the blue dragoons are available everywhere. Um, if you build the right building, they are not available if you build a building for tanks and mix. You can only have one of the buildings out of three, I believe. This was an epic battle, we killed 60%. 
believe we are fighting strays here. No, bounded actually. They're surrounded. There are troops. They're bounded. 10 attack, 1 charge bonus, 25 defense. They're really good defense. 70 soldiers. They are numerous too. 2 hit points. Well, the home guards only have 1 hit point and really bad stats in comparison. Palace Watch, also bad. Our infantry is way worse. We have the numbers on our side. That battle. Good job, soldiers! Continue to fire the enemy. This general didn't have a. like, horn. Our range units will continue to fire the enemy. Behind the gunner posts. Kinda prefer a female general or the male one. In battle. Okay, we can enable running. We needed to zoom out to prevent an issue. So the button is used for a different feature with a tool. Can hit our own troops too. Use our AI reinforcements. Can't directly control the AI, but I forgot I probably can have them attack. We will order them to attack. Should have done that earlier. Forgot about it. Charge soldiers. The AI armies will now charge the enemy wherever they are. Uh, we'll zoom out on the minimap, we can still see that there are red units on the map. We we'll killed 81% of the enemy, we lost 14%, so our range units are really, really effective. If the AI can't attack them, they are bad in melee, of course. Let's continue the battle. This was an epic battle. We have the Huron soldiers, the AI army. We lost very few, which is good. The game might crash, we'll see. Hardly lost anyone out of my troops here. Hardly lost anyone. Mostly allied troops have lost infantry troops. Right. Ah, it went, it went well. Much better than I had expected it to go. They might have more than one army. Even if it managed to take back the capital, they have two more settlements. I don't know how many numbers they have there. Probably at least one more army. Maybe two. We have the tanks over there too. And the cannons! Allied army had a cannon, I forgot about that. Didn't need two siege units in the same army. Problem when taking the Goron settlement with the tank is that if they run out of ammo before we're taken down all three gates we will lose again. So maybe we will not be able to take the area even with the tank. We will see. Certainly we will be able to take back the capital of the fairies after, after winning this battle. Then we need to move on and take the other two areas. Take 
the other areas too. Natsu, I believe, and the Huron Cemetery. The Vanquished Fairies, once and for all. So they won't continue to harass Huron. Like they always do. I've done up until now. So this battlefield in the Fairylands is really cool. The pink sky, fairy sky. Here we have some mechs too. Place them in the cavalry unit because they are good enough to charge all the other bad infantry units are the second allied army, the blue army on the map. The mechs were added with the cavalry because they are good enough to fight on their own. Well, the Tukke, they are only good enough to protect the gunners, prevent enemies from charging the gunners, gunner posts directly. <coughs> All right, went very well. Eight percent enemies killed or fled. Fifteen percent allies killed. So we lost one more percent. Clear victory. So General Tukalon Alf of Labrina had nine hundred eight men. <coughs> lost forty-five. Men are in 863, we killed 1134 and took 918 prisoner, I believe. Captain Alboribi of Labrina had 2,503 men, lost 516. So he lost like uh, a fifth of his army. And uh, he only lost 45. Yeah. Uh, okay. <coughs> so if it's CTD, we will remember to remove a fifth of the other army, very few of our own army. Okay, and the other army under Captain Alboribi, he lost 516, have 1987 remaining out of 2503, and killed 109, took 103 prisoner. Captain Doltope, who died in battle, and who was the captain of the Fairies of Tarm, had 2613 men, or fairies. Lost 2,266, 347 remaining, killed 562, okay. And the details, <coughs> the gunner post killed 116 of the enemy, that was pretty good. Blue Dragoon unit killed 40, gunner unit killed 13, that's pretty bad. And then we had um, another unit of Blue Dragoons that killed 303 enemies, that's really good. And the hand cannoneer unit that killed 123. Also good. Steam tank actually killed 88. That's good. And Aquadungu units, the cavalry, the list of cavalry, they one unit of them killed 234. Really good. Second best in this battle. And then the other unit of Aquadungu killed 99. And then the mix killed 113. That's also good. And then the hand cannoneer unit only killed 2. Okay. The Allied army unit of Knight of Ambi killed 24. Another unit of Knights of Ambi killed 32, and a third one killed 29. And then we had some cannon forders and Knights of Ambi killed some more, okay. So I will end the recording here, in case it will crash when I return to the map. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next episode, bye.